Okay. Hi. Hello. Everyone can hear me. Music balance is good. I sound good, etc. Cool. So, uh, so nothing's too loud right now. Okay, I could be a little higher. Okay, I'll turn myself up, but let me know if there's any like buzzing or anything. My mic's been doing that lately, I'm not sure why. Okay, so I would like to make this a regular thing where people can submit VODs of matches or just replays, whatever they recorded, that I can critique and and go over. And fortunately, Jules really wanted me to go over this set between her and Splash. I was commentating this tournament. To me, it's um uh, one of, one of one of my favorite matches of the tournament, up there at least. I haven't picked a favorite, but this this is definitely a strong candidate for it. Um, Giancio is a matchup that I don't think, I think a lot of people are overwhelmed in at the moment. There's definitely tricks and things that you can do against him that I will talk about going forward in this. Fortunately, well, unfortunately, I was actually commentating in this tournament. So uh, audio could be a little bit disorienting, but uh, getting into it, we have uh, Jules playing Risotto uh, Diego to try to get guaranteed burst damage in, and I'll talk about why Splash picks Kaku in assist in this matchup uh, later on. Well, not just in this matchup, but he picks Kaku in assist in general. So right out of the gate here, uh, both of these players are kind of picking their character's preferred uh, passive action. What they kind of do to keep themselves safe to see what kind of uh, neutral behavior the opponent is going to display. You see Splash right here putting down two puddles right out of the gate to try to stop Jules from jumping at him. And Jules similarly keeping herself safe with these uh, with the knives. She shot an air one up and shot a, a, a grounded one up, mixing it up, trying to keep herself safe. Um, does anybody know the, like, back a second command on Twitch? Like, what the shortcut is? I think right here, Splash thought that Jules was going to throw another fireball, so he double jumped to get over it. But unfortunately, intentional or not, uh, the double jump was baited. Jules did get the solid whiff punish here. Gets bursted. Um, there's a lot of moves in this game. People don't burst very well. When they burst, Oftentimes, they're putting themselves in situations of disadvantage where they burst something that has a hard knockdown on it, or they burst a move that's going to leave themselves uh, at minus frames. Like, Jules has already shot a fireball here and has recovered by the time Splash has um, gotten out of the combos, tech the soft knockdown, and gotten up. Not entirely sure why she threw this second fireball here to go upwards. I think she was looking for a jump. So something that Jules does quite often is go for these really tight um, true block strings. She did magic series into 214L and tried to cover it with Diego. Uh, that's fine, but Splash got a little bit impatient, ran off the gate trying to, uh, and I wound up getting hit by that. Jules attempted this reset here. Uh, didn't really pan out. Uh, 
What's the mix-up gonna be here? Splash usually likes to go for resets here. No, just goes to the GHA. Um, Magic series just refers to uh, like low to high Gatlings. It's been a, that, I think that's what they called it in Marvel. That's where it came from, I believe. So, um, something worth noting is that not all GHAs are built the same. Some of them give you Oki, some of them don't. And fortunately, Giaccio's doesn't give him uh, an airtight setup. No matter what he does at this point, if he chooses to jump towards jewels, he's taking a risk. It's important to important to know which gha is you can get safe pressure after which characters get no pressure which characters get like light pressure you know what i mean i think what splash wanted here with this assist is to keep himself safe but jules did the right thing and uh backdashed here backdashing after giacchio's gha uh is keeping yourself as safe as possible So that's actually kind of a slept on place to mash is after Giacchio's 3H. He does not really have an option that can keep himself safe unless he's got the right spacing. If he does his 3H too deep, what's going to happen is right here where he did 236L and Jules uh, mashed on it appropriately. I think she tried to go for Metallica there, but just didn't um, didn't quite get it. Playing it patient, both players are, but Jules is at the life lead here, doing the right thing. Giacchio, if you don't have a fireball, or even if you have a weaker fireball, he's tough to get in on this ice puddle. There's not much incentive for him to go in if he has the life lead. Yeah, and Jules, I'm going to get that to here uh, shortly when I see him go for a uh, puddle restance. But it's fortunate for Jules that um, that splash is at the life depths it is required to go in. Even against Risotto, keeping yourself safe with the puddle, it doesn't mean much because Risotto will turn on invisibility, go in, do a normal, and then step on the puddle. Risotto can't initiate offense on this puddle. Because he's not Wamu. Wamu can attack and keep his invisibility. Risotto can't. Tries to parry the knives. Unfortunately, um, I think Jules decided to initiate offense here. That was the right thing to do. Gets bursted, but unfortunately, Diego's going to hit him. What's the offense going to be? Uh, goes for a reset. I'm not sure whether that was intentional or not, but it pays off. Oh, drops the combo. It happens to the best of us. Splash probably scrambling there. That's why he gets gets clipped by the late too well. I'm doing something on wake up. So, um, something I would like to mention is everybody likes to talk about Risotto's 2M. And while it is a fantastic button, there are a lot of characters in this game who can compete. You know, in this matchup especially, Giancho has some amazing buttons like uh, Jump M. Jump M is especially strong in this because if you're doing Jump M, then you're going over the 2M to begin with. And it's Giancho's Jump M is longer reach than the 2M. He's one of the characters that can appropriately play uh, mid-range against Risotto and do well. Unfortunately, gets caught by the cross-up. Um, I like that a lot. I think that Jules, you could probably stand to do more offense like that. 
rather than uh, do a lot of this true block string, flash cancel, true block string, flash cancel, true block string nonsense that you do. Because I understand why you do that, and it's because people just don't sit there and block. People don't know the right places to take risks. And against a player who does have some experience in a fighting game like Splash does, some offense like that where you'll do like jab into 214M is probably going to start building some mental stack. People are more prepared to deal with uh, fuzzy blocking 214X at the end of a block string rather than towards the start of it. I do think that throwing a lot of these fireballs like this is risky. The risk reward on those, it's like fun, right? You hit somebody with a fireball, they get um, they get thrown on the ground. But if you throw another one, like a grounded fireball right after this air fireball, in this patch, now you're going to be able to manage something like that. You can watch Risotto throw the fireball, land into it in SG, and probably going to be able to punish him. I would throw less of those the way it seems like you are and throw them more with intention. If you throw the one up, be ready for it to hit and initiate offense afterwards. What's the cross up? Unfortunate. Happens all the time. Giaccio's jump H is a pretty strong cross up button. In situations like uh, like he he freezes you and he chooses to go for ambiguous left right with the jump H it's it's pretty tough drops the combo I believe maybe you tried to go for two three six or something but I'm not quite sure so at this point I've seen this a few times and once Splash has blocked three or four hits, he starts stand blocking. What that means for you probably is if you observe an opponent stand blocking, that means they think they are safe to start backdashing or jumping. If you did like a lot of staggered lows into 2M or 2H, it probably would have started catching him at this point. Instead of doing LMH 214L, maybe do like delay 2L, 2L, 5L, 2M, 2H, something like that. I'm pretty sure that that would work at this point. The amount of times that I've observed this, um, this behavior while he's on defense. THJ, I think that's going to be the game. I think, if I remember right. That was level 3. I think that thing is going to kill. No, nope. Metallica, not much to do. Cool. Well, it did work out in this first game. I think Splash was scrambling a little bit, trying to get his bearing on this matchup. Splash has fighting game fundamentals. But what he lacks in this game is um, is experience. He doesn't have a lot of matchup knowledge in this game. So against the character, well, against any characters really, there's not that many players for any of them, just because our entire scene is spread around 50, 53, 53 characters, I believe, at this point. So. Yeah, um, Jules, I don't know. That's what I think. I think he could have turned stand on and walked towards you because Gyancho's walk is pretty fast, but I'm not 100%. You didn't have assist on deck, so it's a maybe. I would have to check that situation. Hello, Sheep Moment. Welcome to the chat. Uh, 
starting in the next game, we do see this behavior once again of both players trying to get a read on what the other is going to do. I feel like this is where Splash starts to try to get a little bit more proactive in his approach. Yeah, it starts to SG the needles. I'm not, I, I'm not sure what I just saw. Um... Doesn't block the cross up. I wonder if he thought, or the, doesn't block same side. I wonder if he thought it was going to block cross up or is doing something else. You don't see counter hit, so he definitely wasn't mashing. That's something important to note. Uh, on your Oki, you should be looking at the UI to see what they tried to do. If you see counter hit, they tried to, they either failed the DP or they pressed buttons or just did something that like just wasn't inv invincible in general. And you can take that knowledge going forward to um, understand what they're trying to do on offense or defense rather. Good burst bait. Uh, Splash had been bursting early pretty much every chance that he had got until this point, so good call on that. I will comment on the fact that unless you have like 100% confidence in that they are going to do a burst at a certain point, I don't think it's worth it to bait a burst. Because if you whiff your SG like you get nothing done, you might even get punished under some circumstances. But he had displayed this behavior a few times until this point and good stuff free damage let's take it back to neutral can't hurt you do do this a lot you've shown that you're willing to just jump at him and he asked you to jump in uh sg'ing a jump in is the highest risk highest reward option against it right so what it means if someone does that is that they have some level of confidence that you're going to do what you just did so if this happens to you or you see someone doing it what's on their mind is you having you performing some kind of error approach even if they got it wrong it's worth paying attention to that because it shows you what they're thinking about. Okay, so uh, good stuff on calling out the 6M. And you do, in general, play pretty well against the uh, restands, but allow me to actually we'll, we'll just keep going for it you thought he was gonna do something slower like a 6m or a command throw maybe or you know just wait you jump it was the right it was the right call holding up beats 6m and command throw in that circumstance I think maybe that's what you had on your mind. You did one single 2 3 6 H there and then went in. Maybe you were ready for it to into hit and get your offense started. I see the ice here, good stuff, but you press a button into it. And, you know, that's part of the matchup. If you SG this ice, it's better to just back off than to take a risk trying to poke him because you might stick your stuff in the eyes. If you're close enough to him, SG twice and you'll be safe. Good place to burst. What's the restand option going to be here? He did a 6M and it got jumped next time. So he's probably going to do something tighter, like a 2L. Yeah, see, that's exactly what happened. He went for a, uh, a low to try to catch you holding up or back dashing or something or other. But he made the right choice here after seeing you jump the first time.
Once again, solid match here on the ISC. It was just too close for that to be safe any farther out, and you would have been toast here. The ice would have froze you. You would have whiffed your job, but a good place to press a button. Splash does this a lot because he thinks it's um, it's it's safe. It's a good thing to do. If you end your block string in ice, then you're like plus two or plus three or something light like that, and he can press a 2M to um, catch you doing anything after it. But good stuff contesting this. Another restand, what's it gonna be? He tries to command throw you this time because I think he saw that you blocked the 2 out. So maybe at this point he was able to, uh, he was thinking that you're gonna play more defensively and this command throw is gonna work. He rotated his options effectively. The logic is there, not 2-3-6-L. That's, that's what I mean, Jules. 2 3 6 L isn't 2 3 6 the other ones are. Sorry, I got the notation wrong, but one of them isn't plus enough, the others are. He did rotate his options effectively here. The logic makes sense for him to do these, but unfortunately you had outplayed him on every one of these. You just guessed correctly. Good whip punish on the command throw. I don't know if you're ready for that option in particular or you're just pressing 2M, but either way. So, dealing with white ice, I'm not entirely sure. When I've played Giaccio, it seems mad random as to when it's going to hit you. But you get the, the empty jump low here, good stuff. I think you take this round, unless you're HJ whiffs. No, okay, cool. Clash with 2M, might as well just press it again. You know, yours is gonna out prioritize Giaccio's in that circumstance. Better hitbox. You get the hit, 214H uh, and some Metallica. Alrighty, we take those, we take those spacing specific uh, options. I think at this point it's safe to assume he's a little bit rattled and doesn't want to take risks that much because it hasn't um, hasn't paid off. So he's trying to take it a little bit more patiently. Unfortunately, he gets whiff punished, or you get whiff punished here by missing your cross up. Sorry. Restand back dash the puddle. That's another thing about Gyanchu. People panic and they start to just do options. If you see him knock you down and you see this pedal, you have to confirm which pedal it is. If it's 2-2-H, do not backdash because you're just going to get yourself frozen. If it's 2-2-L, most of the time you can SG guaranteed or you can backdash it. Sometimes he'll chase you after it, but it's a pretty safe option to backdash if you see 2-2-L. You have enough time to see what he's doing before you pick an option, so just stay patient and um uh, choose the right one. Oh fuck. What were we on? Game game two round 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 four? Round yeah, game two round two. I don't know how to micro control to it, so you know we just gotta we just gotta wait till we get back there. One more thing I could comment on is you tend to after you do two one four L into blast cancel or you call an assist, you do jump m 66 six jump m nearly every time which is fine but it's not a mix-up good players 
recognize that there's not a 50 50 there but i think splash was panic a little bit so it gets opened up by the by the low There you go, once again you got that, but opens them up. JHA. Can't really do much with that. Maybe he could have called Cocky in, but I'm not sure. You should, because they're in block stun from Diego, you should try considering empty low or doing cross ups. It is not a 50 50 kind of mix up, but you know, in that kind of circumstance, some players are going to get cracked open because their mental stack is overloaded. They're thinking about too many things. They're thinking about fuzzy blocking the jump M empty low. If you put in include more options like that, you're going to get more mileage out of your assist and your meter in those circumstances. Um, on that note, right, something that fighting game players like to talk about, and I'm guilty of this too, is if they see that a circumstance has multiple options but is not objectively a 50-50, they kind of write off the mix-up. But hitting people with options in those circumstances is entirely dependent on what you've displayed already and the information you can gather from the opponent's defensive habits. If you spend meter and do 6-6 six, six, jump M and that's the only thing you do without any observation of how they react in those kinds of situations, then it's never going to pan out. Your 6-6 six, six, jump M is going to happen more often if you see them uh, blocking with patterns that are going to indicate they're thinking about you going for empty low or something. So I think this is where Splash starts turning it around and we're going to look at what both you and Splash do differently to make that happen. From what I have a play played of you, and this is just an observation, you don't adapt particularly quickly. So Splash, with his experience in other games, is that's that might be why he he takes the lead here. But we'll see. Free damage, might as well take it back to neutral. No offense there. Splash is SGing a lot, and it's working a lot because you're doing a lot of the same things. He's getting that read on you and is comfortable enough taking high risk options to to do that. You've done uh, after like um, after like a fireball. You've done dash jump medium uh, quite a number of times. You've never bothered to just run forwards and poke at him with two M or five H or anything else, or do like one of the two one four X series in neutral to make him flinch. It's always been 6-6 six, six, jump M, and he's getting a read on that. Restand. You get hit. The I think the stream freaked out there, and I didn't see what happened, but it was 2-2-L. Two, two well. He went for another reset after that. You do neutral jump to get out. Take the free damage. You might as well. Um... He did empty jump tap time, which is cool. You didn't just do jump M again. I don't know if it was misinput or not, but good stuff. I think this was where you saw him SGing your jump M a lot and trying to bait it, but he didn't fall for it this time. He did an SG 
and you weren't able to whip punish him. Instead, he responded with his own buttons. Good SG on the ice. Flash cancels back. Once again, you stuck a button into the ice, and that's just situational awareness. You can't contest him in that point. If you SG the ice, it's better to just go away and start playing neutral. Keeps himself safe. 2-2-L, two, two backdash, cool. He didn't do 2-2-H two, two, to try to catch you. But your backdash gets clipped by the jump M. That is a button that you have to be worried about against Gianchio. It's probably his best button. It lets him confirm no matter where it hits pretty much. And even if he's really far out, then it, it'll work out. It's just a long, good button. We stand, what's it gonna be? Good block on the 2-0. That's tough. You tried to SG there, but the flash cancel made it too, made it, yeah. It made the ice come out. It, it messed with the timing of your SG, which is very unfortunate. I don't think this was intentional, but it's the way it worked out. Restand, good backdash on it. Now if I splash, at this point, I would start dashing up into buttons. I would start trying to challenge your awareness instead of start, instead of keep playing a uh, low risk, low reward RPS. White album keeps his neutral safe. Unfortunately, you get clipped here. I'm not sure what happened. I think you stuck a button. Yeah, counter hit. You stuck a button in the white ice. Giaccio, if he does not have... If he hasn't already knocked you down, the only ways that he's going to open you up are 6M and, like, throwing you. Especially if he's that close. Jump H as a cross up is going to whiff. So if you're in a situation like that, he's got white ice on, he's super close to you, just wait for a 6M. Unfortunately, 6M does throw bait as well, so there is some risk to it, but that's why you should try to react to 6M instead of just trying options. Empty jump low, works out. HHA hits, cool, good round. Nobody's aware of clashes, you know, nobody's used to it yet. I'm not either. I'm sure Max Sev, Tusk, and nobody really is at this point. But he keeps pressing after the clash, thinking his button's gonna win, and yours is just better. Clashes is something we do need to, as a scene, need to be more aware of. And if you clash, and you think you might clash, you can actually react to the clash with flash cancel and be able to punish pretty much anything. Even if you clash with a jab, you flash cancel the clash, you'll punish it. Not sure why he's just setting puddles at a life deficit. I think he thinks you're just gonna like rago jump at him, but you have no need to right now. And you're not, which, you know, props. Probably gonna restand, do Oki. You saw 2-2-L, you backdashed already. What's the play here gonna be? You have a tendency of backdashing again after you do it once because you're panicking. Fortunately, you didn't do that here, and it looks like he's gonna jump into these knives. Do initiate offense after this. It's gonna clip him walking back, I believe. Yep. The GHA. How do you lose this again? Wait, actually, I do think you take the second game and he runs it back. Okay. Mm. 
Right, so it's at this point that I believe Splash is gonna... Gonna start adapting to what you're doing. Because I've seen a lot of the same behaviors. I feel we wouldn't be able to adapt to it that fast. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what Splash does here. I think what he's going to do is he's going to attack your habits of throwing multiple knives, of backdashing on wake up, and he's probably, we haven't even really gotten to see see him do offense on block. You've always just RPS the right option out of that. So he might take more true block strings to force you to RPS at a different time. He might start blowing you up because you're taking the RPS so early. Restand, what's it gonna be? Just goes to the combo and set into Cloud Oki. This is the first time I believe this set that he's opted for a Cloud instead of a Restand. And you went for the right option here. One thing you could have done is because you held up, this mix up is actually punishable. If he goes for Cloud Command Throw, you hold up into it, you can punish it. I think you hesitated a little bit. You weren't quite ready, so you got counter hit by by two C, two 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 B. Sorry, goes for another cloud. That I've told a lot of people to backdash the cloud as well to get hit on purpose, and that's the right spacing to do that. If you're closer to him, then backdash isn't gonna work out. He's just gonna do a confirm but it's at that range where you can establish that and up as an rps option to try to make him guess a little more goes for the raw 6m i think he's trying to crush your 2m with that because in panic situations I've seen you do it a large number of times where you do a 2m you're like uh oh uh, 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 fuck shit another 2m even when you whip it which is might have what he's been trying to do gha gets light pressure i think he's gonna try to kill you for backdashing here The last time he GHA'd, he backdashed, so I think he'll try. Nope, just goes for a puddle, tries to keep it safe. He's at a life lead, doesn't need to take a risk like that. I get it, I get it. So it's at this point that Splash really has no incentive to, to go in. You're at a major life deficit, he doesn't need to take risks like that. And Gyatra is fast enough to be able to move around like most neutral options that you're going to be able to take. Okay, good 2 on 4 um, I think he's used to the fact that you do assist pressure or true block string, so, you know, wasn't ready to fuzzy block. I wish I could play this back just a little bit. Like, one or two interactions to see why that 2M worked. But, to be honest, he has been getting clipped low on like the second hit of a block string pretty option uh, pr pretty often i think he's trying to rps you way before that he needs to you can't do that with risotto that early in the string there's not really a point to it right with risotto you mostly just wait for a point of contention and try to do something against it He's not in a combo, so he doesn't have to scramble, just randomly pick options to deal with the reset. If you're just in a block string against this character, you can just wait. You can you can chill out. He might throw a knife to get more plus frames, but he's not really at that point mixing you up. You know what I mean? Good burst. SG's nice, but it doesn't mean much because he's at the wall. That's what I was talking about before, where the invisibility doesn't mean much against this puddle. You jumped towards him, you did something, and landed in it, and now he's plus. He has the plus frames to work with. It 
Is he gonna catch you mashing here, I wonder? He does not USG instead. That's decent RPS there. Something that's actually even safer than both of those things is that 3H, if you block 3H, he can only do a special cancel, right? He can't do any more lows. He can't, un unless he wants to flash cancel and spin bar there. Something you can do is rotate to get out of the ice and punish him. Lucky SG, S, S, stylish dodge there. I don't think that was intentional. You panicked and did it back and he's gonna kill you for it. Decent burst. Is this gonna kill? I think so. Yeah, it is. So Splash almost runs it all the way back. Okay, I didn't even remember that. You're probably holding up there, I believe. There's no counter hit, and you didn't back down. So the only other thing you could have tried is holding up. And you unfortunately got clipped. You just picked wrong that time. Is Oki gonna be one more restand? Once again, I think you're trying to hold up. Why would he go for the same option twice? You might be asking. But after the restand, the 2L is the lowest risk and one of the highest reward options. So I have this thing ready, right? Uh, tell me if this works, guys. Um, oh, shit. Um, yeah, okay. Ignore the names at the top. But I've prepared this kind of thing. Can you guys see ASV right now? Okay. So I recorded the Gaccio dummy with the uh, with most of the common options that he's going to do out of that T2 restand. I have him set to do 3H, 22M, just because it's like the the easiest way to record it that I could think of. But I have it set to do dash throw, I have it set to do two ball, I have it set to do 6M, and I have it set to do standoff command throw. So you see what's happening here? Unless he opts to go for 2L as a combo instead of a restand mix up, you're going to be able to get out. And backdash avoids the other options as well. You see it avoids 6M, it avoids the command throw, it avoids uh, it avoids a dash throw. If he delays it enough for it to be 2L, uh, for it to be like a restand into a low, you're gonna be able to bank that show. I have it set for it to be a combo here, which shows that if he goes for the combo there into knockdown, what do you have to lose by mashing back dash, right? Does that make sense? If he does anything else, then you get out. But if he goes for a combo, then you are gonna get hit anyway. Here, I'll run through it one more time, but I'll record a fifth slot with the delay low. Actually, I think that combo.
and then the last one yeah see there you go including the option that goes for restand and low there's basically no risk to mashing back dash there unless he starts taking risks out of his favor like doing 6-6 six, six jump H or like a deep dash into a low this works man we're not listening to this ad okay we're gonna go back to our to our jazz um okay so getting back to the match Neutral jump and he's done it every time. I'm wondering why he's not um, doing anything with it at this point. Two and four L flash cancel. Keep yourself safe. I wonder what he was trying to SG. The only thing he could SG there that you've displayed is two and four M. But you've only done that once or twice. Maybe he was he was panicking because he's on like last game last round or something. Uh, what about standoff 2-2-L 2-M mix between stand on 6-M or stand on 2-L? It depends on how far you are away from him. If you're too close, then stand on 6-M is going to catch your backdash. It's just like dealing with the cloud, where you have to recognize how deep you are into it. Okay, it just goes into GHA. Solid confirm. I don't remember how you got hit. Okay, got next mix up. Okay, what's it gonna be? You backdash. So, um, he did cocky when he says there. And I think he might have done this to keep himself safe in case he didn't, um, in case he didn't backdash. But Splash does this to emulate having both puddles up. Cocky when assist comes out at the perfect spacing where it's roughly where 2 2 H would be. So he'll set 2 2 L. And do calculating assist to make sure you can't uh, defense RPS out of it. Keep yourself safe. Okay, I wouldn't take risks there either, especially not against a button as brolic as Giancho jump in. Free damage, might as well. What's the decision gonna be? Throw knives, throw more knives. Sorry, we're throwing knives. Cool. One more knife. Stop right there. I thought for sure that that was going to hit you. I thought you were going to be holding up back at that point. You don't even mash after the puss on block. Okay. How do you die here? Okay. I completely understand that. Splash hasn't displayed that option too many times just in a box string. We have rarely, if at all, seen it so far, and it's strictly a reaction check when he does like 236 flash cancel into it. You can't do anything about it, you just have to wholly react to it. Or burst if you have it, but you didn't have burst. That said, when Splash does 236L flash cancel, you have to consider the mix-up options. What can he actually do to open you up if he hasn't already knocked you down to limit options? Once again, it's going back to the point that Gyasu on block, he's mostly just going to do 6 or throw to try to open you up. And you can't throw you when you're in that amount of block stun, so uh, the only real thing you have to consider in that situation is reacting to 2M. You don't want to just hold up back or back because he could clip you with a low, but 6M is the only thing you can uh, really worry about in that situation, at least until you're out of uh, out of the initial box line.
Notice how he is only SGing after the first or second knife. He's not waiting for it in particular. I think he's recognized your habit of throwing them multiple times, but he's not ready to deal with it the first or second time that it happens. Keeps himself safe with Puddle in case you try to take a risk, and he kills your habit of backdashing here with Jump M. A great button to do that because it hits so deep. It's important to appropriately rotate your defensive options. Not always pick the one that seemingly has the best risk reward to it. Metallica, take your damage, might as well get your life lead deeper. Yep, I jumped them. Another 6M here. Your mental stack just isn't prepared to deal with that. But if you realize that it's his only option in those circumstances, then it's okay to deal with it. It's It, it becomes much easier. You just have to recognize your circumstances, realize what options are dominant, and be prepared for it. I bet he's going to do it again. Oh, no, you backdash that. Beautiful. Um, this must be what he was looking for with that last just SG I talked about. But he didn't do it late like you should. That could be parsec. Uh, 6M is reactable. It's like 26, 27. It's not very fast. So you do it again. He's really starting to catch on to your backdash habit because he did that puddle. Maybe you weren't reacting to 2 2 all along and you were just backdashing there. But that's what gets you killed here, unfortunately. another another like check on the backdash here that's basically all of the damage that he's gotten in this round is clipping you doing that taunt combo into gha or not even gha It's at this point that we need to talk about how, when you recognize somebody chasing your backdash, how specific it is generally. Because if somebody's doing like a delayed dash jump to catch your backdash, they're basically sacrificing all pressure to get the best reward on dealing with that option. So if you see someone do that, the odds are likely that they will do it again. What that means is you can either wait for the jump and SG it because on your knockdown, right, if you see jump, what are they doing? They're either safe jumping you, they're baiting your SG, which you very seldomly have at all done on wake up, or they're trying to catch your back dash. SG beats those both, and even safer than that, you can try to SG it. If you fuck up an SD, you end up blocking, which isn't that bad. I think maybe before you take the time to cool down, uh, you you might get killed by this habit. It happens to you. You do what you gotta do. Here, 
here. Before we get back into this, let me put on like a, a different mix or something. Um, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's just been me talking over this the whole time. All right, that's a little weird. Okay, that's because I have no scene on this. Let me put this up. Sorry about that. I meant to have something stimulating to be entertaining. Okay, that should be better. If it's too loud, then let me know if my voice is too quiet. Let me know. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't mean for this to be that boring. Backdash again. I'm pretty sure he's like hard focused in on you doing this over and over and over at this point. Once again, the exact same thing. Look at what you chose and look at the option that he picked to beat it. It's specifically for that. SG on reaction to the puddle. Alright, cool. Back to neutral. Another SG. Taking a lot of risks here. That's like the fourth time, I think, that you've poked into the ice, unfortunately. You just have to realize that is, is what's happening here. You hold up. Which is fine, but that also loses to the... 6M from before. But he can't do it in standoff anyway. So, you know what? Cool. Good choice. His reward here for doing this mix up is fairly bad if he doesn't get the command throw. His combo is not going to be too much, re regardless of like what route he goes. Catches you holding up again, I believe. That's what I was just talking about, where he's emulating, putting two puddles down with Kongu and assists, and it works out. You're gonna take your damage or go for the combo. You're gonna do both, actually. Cool. How do you lose from this? Or maybe you get this round actually. I don't remember. Alright, yeah, you get this round. Once again, like the fourth knife gets SG. He's not ready for it in the first place, but he's watching you do it over and over. But it does nothing with the plus frames here. I think he's trying to keep himself safe because after those, sometimes you go in. This left right is fake as fuck. You put down the puddle. It's not bad, but it is just a habit that you could be taking advantage of. If you see someone SGing scalpels, they're paying attention for scalpels, especially after this, the, anytime anything got SG'd really, 
in neutral, then they're looking for it. And you can use that as evidence to make decisions in the future. You throw those knives, he's waiting to SG it. You could like just run up to him and like start start doing pressure probably. Interesting 3H. This space is the cross up. It's important to recognize at what spaces he can do that cross up and what spaces that he cannot. He can do it from not as close as a lot of people realize against most characters. Taller characters have more of a problem against it, wider characters have more of a problem against it. Like, the widest character hitbox wise, I believe, is Iggy Stand On. And that dude gets wailed on by mix ups like this. Once again, that same situation, you get hit by 6M. I can't tell what you're doing. I couldn't even tell if you were mashing because it was true block strength, so I can't see counter hit pop up over here. Hard to say. But I believe you were blocking, you just didn't react to it. I don't think that has a name. goes for a low a hit later than he usually does which is like very minute uh, adaptation but it works out keeps you in the true block string catches you probably holding up or back dashing but because it's hit later your timing is slightly off so you can do this too well into cloud gonna hold up again no I think you backdashed but did it from too too far in setup pays off this time this could be the game I believe At a point like that, he didn't have any meter. So even if you got hit, it's okay. You probably weren't going to die. He got more out of baiting you doing something to beat the command throw than he would have gotten off the command throw. Something that I notice here is there is, whether it's paying off or not, there's a lot of guessing. If we can reduce the amount of outright guessing and start taking decisions that put ourselves in situations of better risk reward where we can take risks, then it will pay off better long term. Gets hit mashing there. You see the counter hit over here. Panic jump in. Happens to the best of us. Free damage. Might as well take a massive life lead. You don't need to go in. Wowie. 
That was belligerent. Unfortunate with one HHA. That definitely would have killed the super skills really well. It's Oki in the meme. This is one of the knockdowns where it's okay to take risks like that. Because he has to work harder to hit you than you do have the dodge. Backdraft has worked fortunately every time there. He hasn't ever gone for like a delayed jump in to catch you doing it. Mash on 3H, which is interesting. I don't know why you did. Probably because he did two 2Ms and you didn't want to block another one. That last bit one more time. last interaction. Okay. He mashed. I didn't see that the first time. Unfortunate to do that against Rosetto because his 2M is just so big. If he whips a jump in from that far out, it's not very likely that you're going to be able to contest him unless you have like something good. Like His 6M probably could have gone over the 2M, but I don't think that's what he pressed. I think he tried to like 2M or uh, try to 2L or 3H or something. Okay, so overall, why Splash got those games is because he was able to identify that you were not really rotating your defense options adequately he's able to uh, games three and four basically were just him calling out your backdash over and over and over pretty much getting 6m because you weren't ready to deal with it and he hadn't established that option earlier in the set it is difficult if you don't know all the situations to rotate your defensive options accordingly but if you are able to understand what options you pick what they tell your opponent, what they mean by you doing them. For example, in the Cloud Oki, he, in like games three and four, he did 6M over and over because he was trying to get you to, uh, he, he tried to catch you doing something other than blocking, you know, or SG. At that point, you can start SG in the Cloud to get out if he's not gonna do command throw. Once again, that's risks that we don't want to take though. You lost the fourth game because he outrisked award you on 6M, right? If you just took the command throw there, you would have had another chance to interact. I think that you probably need to be more aware of what defensive options you're picking at any given time and why you're doing them. With all of those backdashes, you have to realize before you go in, right? Like, why? Why am I backdashing him? What options does this cover? What is this going to make him think that I'm trying to avoid? You know what I mean? A 
in general though, I think you displayed good matchup knowledge against Gianchio. But you thought that maybe he would try to, um, maybe he wouldn't adapt to what you were doing. And Splash absolutely did. Your offense is also fairly predictable, I would say. You should probably include more more six s more two three six s more knives to get your plus frames back right because after five h or two h nearly every time you decided to take some kind of risk generally speaking and while two three six is a risk if you condition someone to block two one four l that much that means then you're able to you're, you're probably going to be able to do a fireball and keep your turn going you're going to be able to keep the rps going you should, I think the priority here is to start paying attention to the player. Like I said, you displayed good matchup against Gianchio, but Splash started catching up to you because you weren't paying attention to Splash. Or yourself, really, but that kind of goes along in, in the same vein as not paying attention to the player and what kind of options that they're trying to cover by responding to your defense. The goal in this situation is adapt faster and pay attention to what your opponent's doing, even if you're winning. If you're playing first to ten, and I'm notoriously a bad first to ten player through multiple games because when I start winning I get confident in what I'm doing and eventually the opponent starts to overtake me and I don't adapt fast enough to realize what I'm doing is no longer working. You backdashed a lot so Splash started calling out backdash and you didn't deal with that until it was almost too late. This Right, kind of, but in Adapt Faster, I'm really trying to explain how to get to that point because it's not as easy as, as it seems. There's a lot of nuance to the kinds of decisions being made. Rotate more options on defense is part of that adapting faster. The options you should rotate should be in correspondence to what you have shown already and what the opponent has shown you. I think ultimately the conclusion that we've come to is that you should have a greater understanding on how what you do affects the opponent. What decisions you do and what what they'll do to respond to that and how you can be ready for it. Right, right, yeah. But I feel like if I go too much further, I'm going to uh, start start repeating things. I need to calm down. I need to uh, ruminate on it a little bit further myself. But I have explained what I feel like boiling it down to a fundamental level, what it takes to adapt faster. So I'm going to cut the stream and I'm going to probably get some games in and I'm going to enjoy the rest of my night. And peace out. Thanks for watching y'all. Rate five stars, uh, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, peace out.